Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Welcome to the COB. I'm Danny Okuye. And I'm Juliette Sali. On this day when we are seeing quite a bit of selling coming through, particularly amidst our consumer staples stocks today. Uh, so extending losses in late trading, we're waiting NVIDIA, of course, as well. The CBO 200 down 7 tenths of 1%. Yeah, and the ASX 200 off also by 7 tenths of a percent at the moment at 58 points to 7,600 on the dot. But of course, we'll need those final trades to come through. Now, let's check in with those three themes of the day, Jules, because I'm starting to feel that sinking feeling, yeah. not the loving feeling, the sinking feeling. And there are a suite of stocks that are really getting hammered. Mm, absolutely. We've just talked about, you know, the, the big impact coming through from uh, the consumer staples sector. Woolly is going to get a new CEO. I think it's fallen to its lowest since May 2015. Yeah. Um, but a lot of a lot of selling, and I mentioned earlier, we're looking ahead to Nvidia coming through as well, and that's sort of weighing into some of the sentiment too. Absolutely, and for those of you on Twitter, a shout out because I am running a poll on the Nvidia results. Ooh. So go and vote. Do you think the markets will go up or go down as a result of them at the moment? It's pretty 50-50, so okay. that's not going to really help us at all. <laughs> Nevertheless, if you are on Twitter, follow me at Shareplicity and place your vote. But it's also turning into a bit of a shorter's paradise, yeah, Jules. Yeah, you were talking about La Visa. La Visa, $100 million short out wow. on that company. Now, what's interesting about this is the fact that a lot of the retailers have done really, really well. But for some reason, the shortest has decided that La Visa is going to have the miss. So mm. we'll have to wait and see. I was in La Visa the other day getting some uh, accessories for the Tay Tay concert. Oh, was it busy? It was very busy. In oh. fact, they had sold out of those. Um, Tay Tay um, specials? Those, I don't know what they're called, the bracelets, the friendship bracelets. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Talking about other things, wrestling with wages. I mean, 4.2%, is that what the wages growth yeah, it, is looking like? Yeah, it came in as expected. But I guess the point I just wanted to make here is that it's still high at the mm. end of the day. I think if we are looking at risk to markets at the moment, the narrative seems to be almost shifting mm. to people talking about if we don't see inflation continuing to trend down, whether or not markets are going to start to get concerned about rate rises again. I mean, I'm starting to hear it in the US. RBA still has it as a possibility. Nevertheless, yeah. wages still probably in line, but they're not well, it was Low. kind of, yeah, it was kind of a few things, wasn't it? I mean, obviously the, the competition for workers pushing things mm. up, but also those minimum agreements yes. um, getting the, giving the boost, I should say. All right, let's have a look at sectors. Consumer staples definitely underperformed today on the Woolies news. Um, looking at how all of those companies no, we're not going to look at consumer staples. We like to tease you here. We might look at the miners <laughs> instead. And uh, hopefully we'll get the miners up. Yes, there we go. So we have seen quite a lot of weakness, uh, ongoing weakness in iron ore prices. And uh, the big miners were sold off in London overnight. And it has uh, travelled through today with the likes of Fortescue off by 3% and Rio Tinto and BHP off by around a 2%. Uh, looking at the banks as well today, obviously now through with uh, its numbers, ANZ up by almost 1%, CBA sold off today and... Ex-Divi. CBA's ex-dividend. Yes, ex-dividend. So just, yeah, uh, keep, keep that in mind that we are starting to see companies go ex-dividend before you panic. All right. Well, that would be explaining why it's down 2% and everyone else is trending higher. All right. We talked about Woolies CEO Brad Banducci. I mean, that... Uh, how not to do a media interview on Four Corners the other day. I feel a bit sorry. It's almost like the PR de department is in the uh, storm at the moment because apparently he has really come out and said very strongly it wasn't that interview that's forcing him into retirement. Mm. But of course, the markets will do what markets do. But they also had uh, worse than expected results, yeah. Jules. So they are struggling a little bit on that front. Uh, contrary Dominoes, which downgraded earnings a few weeks ago, which led to the share price to fall back down to around $40, they announced their results today um, and the stock up 2%, largely discounted in the market. And of course, we did, uh, Koshi interviewed the CEO, um, so you can catch up with that on our website. Yeah, WiseTech surging more than 11%. It posted a 5% increase in profit and also lifted its interim dividend. Shareholders will get 7.7 .7 cents, which was a gain of around 
17% and they reconfirm guidance, which the market likes. And NAB reported a 3% slip in its first quarter cash profit. Those shares up by about half a percent. Again, the bank just making the points that the consumer is still uh, relatively resilient, but they will be watching to see how uh, us, us poor consumers go after Tay-Tay has been through town. Uh, exactly. Well, poor consumers were still buying lottery tickets. Uh, they <laughs> announced a 26% boost of profits despite weak economic conditions affecting the amount of money being spent on weekly lotteries and scratches. But tell that to the news agent at Tower 3 Barangaroo. Danny, we went down there, didn't we, before that 200? Were you there that day? No, no, I didn't go down. I'm not Fuel really a lottery did. person. Well, I think that was the first and probably the last I'll ever buy. Um, but the queue was huge for 200 million. Nevertheless, none of us won. Well, at least not surprise, anyone surprise. I know. Surprise, surprise. And at least you weren't <laughs> struck by lightning this week. Yes. Anyway, welcome to the COB, Rocco Panzerino from a Macro. Rocco, great to see you in the studio. Thanks and for having me. So, Doing a great job there with the beard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, reporting season. How is it going, Rocco? Do you think we're sort of travelling quite well at the moment? Oh, it depends what sector you're involved in. Um, I think it's been a bit of a mixed bag lately. Uh, firstly, if we take a look at the tech sector, uh, which has been the best performing sector year to date and also the best performing sector for last year, incredible results. Um, we're up 9.5% year to date. Uh, the results today for WiseTech will take that even further. Um, a lot of strong performers like Megaport uh, up 50% for the year. Altium obviously on the news mm. of the takeover. Um, we're seeing a, a lot of strength and it's even worth noting uh, companies like Technology One, Next DC, um, still plugging away, uh, getting on with the job as well. A lot of this has been uh, follow through from the NASDAQ, um, even in the wake of rising bond yields during that same time as well, we've seen uh, incredible strength from the sector. Um, and mainly with a lot of the companies that have made that switch to profitability, uh, like we've seen with WiseTech, Megaport, Altium and, and RIA, uh, if you class it in that basket as well, um, a lot of strength. Now, on the flip side, you've also got the materials sector um, that's lagged quite a fair bit. We've, see, we've seen a shift from materials to, to say, financials um, mm. as well, which has kept the market basically steady because we're about flat uh, year to date. Um, interest rate rises have obviously flowed through onto the balance sheet of a lot of these banks. Um, and over the past 30 years as well, the financial sector's earnings have significantly outperformed uh, the economy or the GDP. Um, that's expected to rise consistently till 2027 as well. Um, so it seems like uh, the sectors that have reported so far um, from real estate, um, tech, consumer discretionary uh, and even finance could be a bit of a safe haven for the, uh, for the rest of the year. Mm. What are you looking at in terms of specifics, um, Kogan, you like if you're looking at the e-commerce space? Yeah, I've been uh, doing a bit of research into Kogan. Uh, they've basically got a portfolio of retail and service businesses. Uh, they've got Kogan Money, uh, Kogan Retail, Mobile, Energy, Insurance, just about everything at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and offering a lot of deals across the board, uh, enticing the bargain hunter. Um, they've launched a lot of business initiatives lately, largely around cutting costs. Um, in their last report, we've noticed an 80 basis point reduction in variable costs as a percentage of gross sales. Uh, fixed costs have reduced by about 2.3 million uh, year on year. A lot of this is attributable to reduced warehouse inventory. Um, they've significantly reduced it to, by about 68% uh, and uh, at the moment have a strong cash position of about 83 million. Now, what's quite interesting about Kogan as well is they've rolled out an advertising platform, which they're seeing extremely strong numbers with. Um, advertising revenue had jumped nearly 100% month on month from October to November mm -hmm. last year. Uh, we haven't really had any visibility on that update since then. Um, macroeconomically, we've got Australia as the third fastest growing country in the world for retail e-commerce growth. Uh, about 82% of households in Australia have made an online purchase in the past mm. year, uh, with about 17% of Australians over 65. So if we cut that out, just about everyone has, has made an online purchase. Mm. Um, consumer discretionary stocks, as I said before, have performed uh, incredibly this year. Um, they're actually the second best performing sector on the ASX mm. over the past 52 weeks. And I, I think just about every single consumer discretionary stock has reported well so far. Um, incredible results from Wes Farmers, JB Hi-Fi, ARB. Yep. Even Breville Group uh, dropped about 12% on its report, but has recouped all of that end sum uh, just in the past uh, three or four days. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been quite strong. Uh, we've also got the report date for Kogan uh, on the 26th. 
so next Monday. So do you think the shorters on La Vista are being a bit brave? They could be. Uh, La Vista has had a really good run though leading into the report. Yeah. I believe it's gone up about 12 or 13 percent just in the last uh, week yeah. and a half. But it'd um, be pretty hard to bank against consumer discretionary at the moment uh, with a lot of these ecstatic results. Yeah. Were you buying Tay Tay bracelets or are you, uh, that, I'm joking, but it, what's your view on the overall... Buying his girlfriend. Well, exactly, or his niece or anybody. Um, your view on, on this so-called Swiftonomics and the impact that should the RBA be worried or is it a, a blip, a media beater? I think it's a bit of a blip, a uh, bit of a media beater. It's obviously she's put in a lot of money into the economy. Mm. Uh, it's expected to grow quite significantly. Uh, especially over the next couple of weeks, but uh, more of a shorter term hump in, uh, in these sorts of economic data. Okay, now we're not going to hold you to this one, and nor is it financial advice. NVIDIA, move the markets up or down? Oh, it's oh. a 50-50 bet. <laughs> it's a 50-50 bet, I'm going to say in line. In line. in line. So no reaction. No reaction. Fair enough. It's all right to sit on the <laughs> fence. We're allowed to do that. Yeah. Uh, Rocco, thank you so much for joining thank us you. as always today. All right. Rocco Panzerino from Macro Capital. The stock of the day was Centre Group. You know, at $3.04, I think brokers have got a target three thirty, three forty. I'm sure they're going to warm to this result. We should see this one pick back up. They're safe. I mean, I was going to say safe as houses, but they're safe as Westfield, <laughs> let's face it. They are, you know, it, it's, it's tangible. You can see it. You can walk around them. It's a, it's, it's a good experience in the main. So uh, there's nothing to dislike about this one. Certainly, they're doing all the right stuff. 99% occupancy. Uh, but you know what I'm going to say, Koshi. You've got to look at an ETF. Um, <laughs> no, probably, uh, probably the one to think about would be VAP from from Vanguard, right. and it literally just tracks the top mm. twenty nine REITs, including SCG. Oh. Uh, I do like the ticker, oh. if nothing else. Um, and it's up around. I'm going from memory here. It's up around thirteen percent over okay. the last six months, okay. and up eight percent over the last month. To Henry's point, because there's a view that interest rates are turning. Okay, should we have a look at the leaders today, Jules, and see, oh, well, CSR. Now, we didn't, I didn't pick up on that one. Apparently, that is up 18% today. Yeah, this is amid speculation. Bloomberg is reporting on a takeover offer from a French company, oh, so that'll do it. Oh, no. Do you know what? Another one bites the dust. We're going to mm. have to start playing Freddie Mercury at this rate because... Altium is uh, potentially going off the boards. Boral, the outstanding minority, is being picked up by Seven Group. Now CSR, James Hardy is going to be one of the, well, James Hardy and Reliance, the last standing materials, uh, building materials suppliers. Do you think we call it Le CSR then? <laughs> Le CSR? <laughs> 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 Pourquoi pas? Pour um, um, okay, and Wise Tech Global discussed their better than expected results up 11%. Strike Energy going for a run, as is Sayona Mining and Aluka Resources. All right, to the downside, um, the laggards today, corporate travel down almost 20%. Half year results missed expectations there, 6% yep. below. Woolies we've touched on, Brad Banducci leaving after 13 years at the helm and also it missed with its numbers. Boss Energy and Paladin just showing a bit of a switch out of some of those um, mining players and Helios off by 5.4%. 5, 5 okay, and let's have a look at the smalls and Argosy Minerals up 13%. Adore Beauty going for a bit of a run up 11 Jules, it's those step ones again. It's they the just anti-chafing underwear. <laughs> 11% as well as Southern Cross Gold up by almost 10%. All right, to the downside, uh, Camplify Holdings off almost 17%, Mayor Resources, Demirix, Burgundy Mines and Solva, all the losers in the small end of town today. Okay, now let's check in what's overnight. And if we didn't already know, no, it's not here, but we do have Atlanta Fed President Raphael Bostic speaking, the Fed Reserve Governor, Mich no, Michelle Bowman. Yes, sorry, I'm getting confused with ours. My brain is not working today. FOMC meeting minutes and of course, what company's reporting after the close tomorrow? It starts with N and rhymes with NVIDIA. <laughs> NVIDIA. All right, let's have a look as well in terms of what's coming through here tomorrow. Bigger cheese, Fortescue. 
Uh, it's just called Fortescue these days, I think. La Visa, which as we've been mentioning, has been a, a shorted one. Nine Entertainment, Qantas, and I think a few other companies it's a as huge well. Huge day, day tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, you're going to be really, really busy. Oh yeah, you're not here. I'm not here. No, I'm busy doing other work. Now let's just have a final check and see where we closed. And the uh, there we go. The Cibo 200 down almost 10 points or just over six tenths of a percent and ASX uh, 200 down just over 50 points also around 0.7%, uh, 7,608 joules. So lots going on underneath the surface. But mind you, it was a bit weaker today, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Your um, lovely green dress didn't help. It didn't help. <laughs> it didn't help at all. Um, all right, I won't, I won't wear it tomorrow. Well, no, I, yes, no, I won't wear it Maybe tomorrow. Maybe wear red and get the reverse. Yes, indeed. <laughs> all right, my brain's going a little bit too. Michelle Bowman, Michelle Bullock, so many. <laughs> exactly, that's what I was, the, the Michelle B's got me on that one. Anyway, uh, lots of great interviews today to catch up on. We'll have lots more tomorrow. So have a great evening. See you tomorrow. Thank you.